since I last looked at my artwork, I've had time away from it. And that's helpful because when I come to it fresh, I can see that there are, are little things that might need to be tweaked before I start adding special effects to this. One thing I notice is my, my cap shape, which is right here, the head wrap, is a little off center. And so ways that we can judge symmetry, I can turn the rulers on and off within PhotoP by using Command R, which you will find under the View Options, Rulers. I can also just click there but toggle it on and off with Command R. And once I have the rulers and I'm using the Move tool, let me increase the size of my tools a little bit for you. There we go. So once I have the rulers showing, I can use the Move tool and I can drag down with the move tool and give myself visual guides. Now why this might be helpful is if I find a center line for the image, I can see that there's more space of yellow on this side than on this side. And if I want that to feel more centered, that way it will cut through the eyes in the same way. I can see that more clearly with the guides. Now to adjust that shape, I'll do what we did a lot of last class. I'll click on that layer. Oh, wrong one. My head wrap, I'm gonna click on the whole folder. Because the folder also has these little triangle shapes and I can always open up the folder with that drop down arrow. I'm going to find the big one in the middle. And what I want to do is hit Control T, right click, and say Warp. I just want to shift the middle. hopefully without distorting the edge. So this is what's tricky about warp. Try it again. I can always do Command Z if it goes wrong. Control T, right click, warp. Let's take this, which shouldn't affect the top half much. There we go. And just shift that middle a little bit in. So that's more equal. And we're not going for perfection. Perfection is an impossible standard, especially as we're just learning these tools. But if you notice something, it can be very helpful. And then even that little warp on the bottom half, it does expose a little bit of yellow underneath there. And so then I'm also just going to use my Move tool, and I'm going to shift the whole thing up a little bit, but I want to select it from the folder instead of from the layer. so that I also move the little corner pieces that I've added. So let me just shift that whole layer up just enough using the Move tool. To cover up that yellow. All right. Now, if at any time you want to not see the guides, you can just hide the guides under View and where it says Show and Guides. And the shortcut for that is Command Semicolon. So you can toggle your guides on and off with Command Semicolon. Remember, we can always save our work. We've already saved it as a PSD and then moved it into our folder with our new name. So this will update our PSD as we're as we're working. So now we have that, that wrap a little bit better centered. And I like that. 
I like how the curve of the wrap, instead of just being an arc like it was in the Emoji Maker, this curve is a counter curve to the eyes, so it makes the whole expression seem a little bit more distressed. Okay, little things we can do. This teardrop, what if we want to punch it up a little bit? So if I go to my original, which is just very flat, the teardrop looked like this. I changed it to this kind of shape. I liked this shape a little bit better. But everything's extremely flat. So maybe I can add a highlight. And we'll talk a lot about coloring and, and digital lighting in the future. But one way we can do that is we can take this shape. I can duplicate it and I can change its color. Let's just go with white. And then I can control T and shrink it down. If I hold down shift, it will keep the proportions. Now, that might seem way too strong. So what I can do is take that shape, while it's still a, a smart object, note that it's not rasterized. It won't allow me to do something like erase from it because it's not editable until it's rasterized and I don't ever want to rasterize it. I want to keep everything a smart object, which is the vector capability within Photopea. But what I can do is I can play with its effects. So I can take its opacity down as a layer. And in vector imaging, this is called transparency. But I can also double click on the layer, just in the gray part of the layer, and that will bring up what are called layer styles, which are really, really helpful for digital graphics. Let me see if I can place this so you can see it clearly and so I can see it clearly and we can see what it does. So we have lots of different layer style options. We'll be playing with some of these today for special effects. The most basic is you can fill in the entire color from here using what's called color overlay. So color overlay has its own opacity and its own color. So I could choose my own sort of blue from here. And then I can play with the opacity of that blue. Let's take it down to maybe 50. Now that's a layer style. And that effect, think of them as special effects on your layers, is shown. It says EFF. And then if you use the drop down menu, it will show you the effects, which you can turn on and off. And all we've done is a color overlay so far. At the same time, if I double click on them, I can add more or I can alter them. The entire effect is still effected by the overall opacity I've chosen for the layer. So as I up the opacity of the layer, also the opacity of the effects will show up. So why don't I keep everything at 100% for now? So we see the full effect happen. So if I go to color overlay, you can see that full color, that's just at 50%. But if I turn that off, it's at white at 100%. I can also fill it with a gradient. And this gradient can be simple like this black to white gradient, or it can be a complicated gradient. Using this drop down menu, I can see a number of preset gradients. I don't want anything too crazy. And then we can also edit that gradient by clicking on the gradient itself. We can add colors just by clicking on the bar, and then we can change those colors. 
Let's put them more in the blue spectrum. Remember, whenever you have a color a slider or color selector like this, you can also click anywhere within the program for that color. So I want something light blue and kind of grayish. So something like that. Then you'll see that gradient, which has yellow and, and the blues, it's kind of reflecting everything. Maybe I want this one to be brighter, so I can alter that. And now you can see that the gradient runs from that color to through that color to that color to that color, but it does it in a linear way. So if I say normal, then I can say, well, let's make it a radial gradation instead. Then it will go from the center out and I can reverse its order or not. And I can also try some of these more specialized types of gradations. But I think I want the straight linear gradation. But instead of it being top to bottom, I want it side to side. So for that, I play with the angle. And I'm going to move the angle instead of 90 degrees to be 0 degrees. Or maybe even yeah, I'm going to do like a 45 degree. So just playing around. And you can always type in values as well. Okay, then I can play with the scale of it. That's how much it stretches or can constricts that gradation. want it maybe just a little bit more shallow like that. And then we can even skew it a little bit with these offsets. So lots of power there with our gradation fill. And then we can always edit the actual colors. So this, I think I just want it to be more of a solid white. Maybe add another blue in there. It's a very light blue. Lighten this one a little bit. Okay. So now we say okay. Now we have that gradient overlay. What if I turn the color overlay back on? Now you can see that with the opacity of the color overlay, that blue, it can overlap with the gradient overlay and now they're both showing through. And they can be turned on and off individually or all together. And then the overall opacity can be affected with the layer itself. So very subtle kind of highlight there. What other effects can we play with? Well, what if we want that edge of the shape to be softened? Even though it's a vector, we can use layer effects, layer styles to soften the edge, even though vectors are generally hard edge shapes. So what we do is we say outer glow around the image. And we're going to choose the mode just to see it clearly. We're going to say normal for now. And we're going to make its opacity 70%. And we're going to do a regular single color. I'll choose that light blue color. And then we are going to increase its size. 
and it's 